wish her by now God you would have reached down And wiped our tears away Stepped in and saved the day But once again I say amen And it's still raining And as the thunder rolls I barely hear you whisper through the rain I'm with you And as your mercy falls I raise my hands and praise the God who gives And takes away And I'll praise you in this dark And I will lift my hand Cause you are who you are No matter where I am And every tear I cry You hold in your hand you never left my side Though my heart is torn I will praise you in I remember when I stumbled in the wind You heard my cry to you You raised me up again My strength is almost gone How can I carry on If I can't find you But as the thunder rolls I barely hear you whisper through the rain I'm with you And as your mercy falls I raise my hands And praise the God who gives And takes away And I'll praise you in this dark And I will lift my hands Cause you are I will praise you in this storm oh, oh. And though my heart is torn I will praise you in this storm I lift my eyes unto the hills Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the Maker Heaven and earth, I lift my eyes unto the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the Maker of heaven and earth.
So, I don't know if this was intentional or accidental. Is this okay, Matt? Stay down here and preach. Preaches with the people. I like it. I like it a lot. So, 4th of December today? Ooh, only 20 days, man, until we start shopping. <laughs> 20 days. Um, before I start the sermon, I also just want to do one little announcement of um, thank you guys for last week. Last Sunday, so awesome, wasn't it? Such a great day in church. So many people involved in, in helping. Um, I also want to sneak in a little apology to the team, the people who had the displays up, because um, that was kind of one of the things I was helping with. But my week before got super crazy, and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, so thank you for all the guys and ladies who uh, did their displays without uh, any um, sign from me, any help from me. Um, it was awesome, and thank you to everyone for such a such a great day. And can I also give a little plug for Pastor John and, and Pastor Betty? Aren't they awesome? They just let, yeah, let's give them a plug. So much going on for them as well, like this week, and yet none of us even want to know any of that because they're just serving and leading us. Um, my interesting week. My interesting week. Um, oh, actually, no, before I finish, can I especially say thank you to, to Peter and Merrill because they added to the parking thing, which was my other responsibility, and made me look really, really awesome. So thank you. Thank you guys. My interesting week is um, that many of you will know that I actually got my dream job uh, at the beginning of last week, or the week before. I don't know. But, um, by the end of that week, I discovered that my dream job was actually a nightmare. <laughs> and so I was employed for one week in my dream job before I had to say to them, I can't do this. Uh, and I I don't expect that anyone else would probably do that job. I think maybe the way that God has used me is that now they will actually change the role and split it into two. So hopefully that's what will happen. Um, but it was an interesting week for me. Uh, and so the funny part about this too is that the sermon today is on peace with God. Having the peace with God. Uh, and it was so great. Um, I don't know who's visiting today, but just to explain what happened with Robert this morning when the, the team were leading, and then Robert had a word from God. Literally, that's it. That's an explanation. That was a word from God. She just, out of obedience, shared what the Spirit spoke to her this morning. And it was it did my confidence a lot because it was the sermon that we're um, having today. Bring our burden to God and He will give us rest. He will give us peace. So, I was once at a conference. The conference was on healing and deliverance. Uh, so it was jam-packed. There were two different speakers. One speaking on healing, the other one was speaking on deliverance, so that's healing is when you're on illness or sickness gets healed, and deliverance is when uh, you're freed from uh, evil spirits, and that's um, basically what that means. Uh, the guy speaking on healing was Randy Clark, I don't know if anyone knows who he is, he's the original Toronto Blessing guy, before it all went a bit funny. Um, so yeah, amazing guys with incredible ministries, they weren't just teaching it, these guys were living uh, this ministry. They, they had so many stories of healings and deliverance, and so they were the two, the big two. But in the middle of the conference, in the very middle of the conference, they kind of gave these two guys a break, and Randy Clark's, um, his personal assistant, got to preach one sermon. And for me, it was his sermon, because he described himself as the guy who carries the bags and fetches the water. <laughs> That's, that's this guy, and he preached on the peace of God, on having the peace of God, and how he had come into his role, and how he felt the peace of God. And for me, it was actually the hinge point, like the central sermon of all of the other sermons, all of the other teaching, because it was about the peace of God. And what it, what it did for me as I listened to him speak, it made me realize that the peace of God, it's actually the goal and the vehicle through which healing and God's power flows. 
It's an essential ingredient in both the giving and the receiving of blessing. Because if you're receiving a healing or, or a deliverance, then obviously that is that's peace. We can see that. But giving peace, ministering to others, it also requires peace. It requires peace with God and that person, and then that overflows uh, into ministering peace, into ministering the peace of God uh, to others. In fact, it's it's almost impossible to contain it. We're going to look at a couple of stories from Mark's Gospel this morning. Uh, so the first one is Mark 4, 35 to 41. It's when Jesus comes to the storm. That day, when evening came, he said to the, to the disciples, this is Jesus speaking, let us go over to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. And there were also other boats with him. So among the disciples, church were very experienced fishermen. They were professional fishermen. They lived on this lake, which is the Sea of Galilee, it's a massive lake. Uh, but they knew well, they'd grown up there, this was their spot. And so it makes me wonder if they could see that this wasn't the right time, if they knew that there was a storm coming, and maybe they just went because Jesus said it's time to go. Or maybe it took them completely by surprise. Maybe they just got on the boat with Jesus and they headed off and they didn't actually see what was about to hit them. Because it says a furious wall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke and they said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? So he got up, he rebuked the wind, and he said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified, and they asked each other, Who is this? Who is this that even the wind and the waves obey you? And if you go to older English translations, uh, most of them, instead of the word quiet, they use the word peace. And so that's the image for me of, of this story that we all probably know so well, is that the disciples were in fear of their lives, professional fishermen, they knew this place, they knew they were about to see. And they come and they wake Jesus up and he gets up and he stands up and he just says, peace to the storm. And the storm obeys him. And so in the Bible, peace is, uh, it's so much more than simply the absence of conflict. Uh, the Hebrew word, which most of the other words about peace come from, is the word shalom, S-H-A-L-O-N, which we've probably all heard it at some point. Uh, it's a Jewish greeting, and it's how they say goodbye, uh, shalom. But what it represents is love and joy and unity and completeness. It's communion with God. It's what we had this morning in communion. It's communion with God. It's peace with God, and it's communion and peace with one another. It is what you get if you love God and others. It's shalom. And the truth is, whether we believe to profess in God or not, it is the deepest desire of every human soul. Even for people who don't profess God, that desire is actually there. It's been put there by God Himself. It's inbuilt into our very core. All of humanity longs for an end to conflicts, to, to conflicts like the, the Russian and the Ukrainian conflict. All of humanity wants an end to those sorts of things. We long for governments to be at peace, for politicians to avoid war rather than provoke it. We long for an end to poverty, to disease and suffering that afflicts so much of the developing world. We long for an end to greed and materialism that affects so much of the rest of the world, our side. We long for a world that is without horrific crimes, crimes that we hear about more and more every day. 
We long for peace on earth and for goodwill to all men. And as individuals, we hope for peace instead of sickness, instead of suffering in our bodies. We hope for peace instead of confusion or fear in our minds. We hope for peace in our hearts, peace in our emotions, peace in our finances, peace in our relationships with each other, peace instead of conflict in our marriages, peace instead of brokenness with parents or with children or with siblings, peace in our workplace, peace in our school, even peace in our church community. Ultimately, deep down inside each and every one of us, we have this great longing for peace, for shalom, for fullness, for community, for connectedness, for joy, for hope, and for peace with God. And we have to have peace with our Maker, because it is from God that all blessings flow. There's no other source. For true blessing to flow, we have to have, we have to find peace with our Maker. It only comes from God. If we cut ourselves off from Him, we are cutting ourselves off from the source of everlasting peace. If we cut ourselves off from Him, we are cutting ourselves off from true freedom. Because it only comes from God. His imitations, but the real stuff only comes from God. The good news is that God wants us to be free and to make peace with Him. He's, he's, he's more desiring of that than anything else. He wants us all to find salvation and healing. God's desire is for shalom with us, communion with us. Psalm 29 11. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Psalm 34, 14. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Psalm 119, verse 165. Great peace have they who love your law, and nothing can make them stumble. Isaiah 26, 12. Lord, you establish peace for us. All that we have accomplished, you have done for us. Amen. And in the New Testament, peace, it's actually one of the fruits of the Spirit. And so we expect all of us as Christians to actually have peace in our lives. And that's not to say it's a pressure, it's to say it's a fruit, it's a reward, it's a gift of being uh, a Christian. Romans 14, 17 to 19. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and approved by men. Let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. 1 Corinthians 14, 33. For God is not a God of disorder, but of peace. John Lennon uh, made his quest for peace famous. I think this is the crowd that I'm, I'm on a winner. John Lennon? Yeah. Sorry, dude. I'll tell you who he is later. <laughs> he wanted the whole world to give peace a chance, to imagine a different kind of world. But John Lennon got it wrong in the very first line of the song, in the very intention of his song, actually. Because he begins with, imagine there's no heaven. He should have begun with, imagine there is one. <laughs> if John Lennon had only seen that, his song might have come true. Because God has a much greater vision for his world than John Lennon had. God does see a place where there aren't any countries or possessions to fight over. God sees a place where there isn't any causes to kill or die for. And yes, where there is no religion too. Where a brotherhood of man and woman live in peace. And where the lion will lay down with the lamb. 
And it's coming, church. It's coming soon because it's called the kingdom of God. And Jesus is the king of the kingdom. It's good to be in the kingdom. Isaiah 9, 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Matthew 11, 28, Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. He said it again personally to us this morning. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give it to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. So let's go back to our story in Mark. The disciples are caught in a storm. They are caught in the storm and it's raging all around them. The waves are swamping the boat. Uh, they know that they're sinking. They know that all hope is lost and they think they are about to die. They are seasoned professional fishermen. This is a storm of a lifetime and they know, they know that they are going to sink, that the boat is going to be lost. And where is God? Where is God in all of that church? He's asleep. No, in this story, he's asleep on a cushion. <laughs> in this story at this time, God is fast asleep on a cushion. And sometimes it seems like God is still there, isn't it, church? When we're being honest, in our own lives, in our own storms, sometimes it feels like God is somewhere asleep on a cushion. Sometimes it feels like God is doing nothing. It feels like he's indifferent to our suffering or our situation. Like he doesn't really care. Like he doesn't know that we're all actually drowning together. Anyone been there, church? I think we all probably put both arms up. We all put both arms up. But maybe you're there today. And I, I know I'm speaking to us here. But I'm speaking to us who are maybe watching this at home or at another time. Maybe you're in a storm right now. Uh, I feel like the word that God gave Rob this morning, God is saying, here I am. I know some of you are carrying a burden. Give it to me because I've got a whole lot of peace and I want to get back to you. We've all been there. We've all been in that place of pain and chaos and feeling like we're drowning, feeling like we're going to die and we're crying out to God, and we're asking where our peace is. Um, Debbie and I have been through a lot of storms. Oh, she married one. She, <laughs> she started there. But uh, we've been through so many storms, and I just wanted to share one when we were um, in Africa. Uh, and so I'll, I'll give a, a little shout out to Lee and Susie and family. Uh, Lee and Susie were with us uh, in Africa when we were uh, doing mission work. Um, they're doing mission now, they just walk, they just moving around the country, following the Spirit, doing whatever He says. So I'm pretty sure that they're going to take all of the bread and that's what they'll live on for the next <laughs> two months. <laughs> but when we were in Africa, we, um, or I, just experienced a massive burnout. Just got to the end of myself. And uh, we were there for, I think it was our third year, we came back home for a little while. And so we were back home for months just doing counselling, just going to, like, I think every second day, <laughs> seeing counsellors. And one of the things we did at the beginning, uh, we were part of a counselling group. It was all these different couples from all different places. And we had to do a questionnaire to see how stressed you were. <laughs> and so one of the questionnaires was all these different things. You know, has this happened, has this happened, has this happened? Um, things like, have you changed your job? Um, have you moved house? Have you experienced... Has, has there been a near death experience in your family? Um, have you experienced, has someone died? There's all these different things. Public speaking, public speaking was way up there. Um, so there's all this list and they had numbers beside them. You had to add them up to see, you know, what your journey had been like. 
And so Debbie and I added ours up, and then they went around the room, the council said, okay, those who have, everybody put your hand up and keep your hand up if you scored over 25. So a couple of people were like, oh, you know, it's not so bad. And so the numbers went up, okay, 50, 75, 100. I think by 100, everyone else had put their hands down, they'd been like stuck with their hands in the air. 500. <laughs> 500 or more was our score. I, I, it was ridiculous. We had just so outstripped um, everyone else in the room with the storms that we had faced in that in that season. That I think it was a two-year season or something like that. And so I got to that place. Actually, I think we accounted for probably 100 of those points. So. <laughs> no, but they they saw actually they saw me at the end. Just um, I was. And I was wasted. I was in that place where the waves were relentlessly crashing over top of me. I was just in that place where I couldn't breathe. Caught in the wave. Have we ever, we've all been caught in a wave and you can't get up? That's, that's the place I found myself. Drowning. Wondering where God was in all of it. Because I was drowning because I was serving Him. That was the irony of the two. I felt like I was totally alone, totally adrift in a sea of turmoil. And it's very hard, if you're in that place today, it's very hard to find rest and peace when you're in that place. It's very hard to find it in a storm. And the reason is, Fairly obvious. <laughs> it's because you're in a storm <laughs> and you're sinking and you are drowning. Like it is very hard to find that peace. That's why we all need each other to help us find that place of peace, to find that anchor point. I have a very good wife, she, she helped me. These guys are okay as well. But you would be crazy to think that life's hardships won't affect you because life is full of storms. That's the truth. Life is full of storms. Thankfully, some of our storms turn out to be just sun showers. Thankfully, we go through those things and we get through it and we go, actually, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. But others do hit like a tidal wave and they capsize our entire life. And there's another kind of storm which I think of as being like a cyclone where we get hit by the storm and then we have a short reprieve where we actually go, oh, I'm glad that's over. But what we don't realize is we're in the eye of the cyclone and then it hits us again from another angle. Those are, to me, some of the worst storms to be And so it's true that peace is incredibly fragile. It's very hard to find sometimes, and sometimes it's all too easy to lose. And human peace, it just won't do. Comfort and uh, support, it's all great, but ultimately, it won't do. It's not enough. We need peace that's anchored to the rock and rocks. Amen? So I'm sure you're ready for some good news in all of this. Uh, there is some, there's some amazing good news. Uh, amidst the crashing waves and the raging winds of our storm, the storm that Debbie and I were in, or mostly me, we did. There is still a small voice. And it was Jesus calling out to us. And he was just saying, it's going to be okay. He was saying to us, he was saying to you, trust in me, because I can see far beyond the storm. Trust in me because I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the beginning and the end. Trust in me, follow my voice, and I will give you rest. He's calling out exactly the same thing today, church, to all of us. Regardless of who we are, regardless of how big or small our storm is, Jesus is calling your name. He's the rock, he's the anchor point. Grab onto him, and you will find your peace. Philippians 4, 6-7 says, Do not be anxious about anything. 
But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. And that's a promise, church, from God himself. Now, it's true that um, God chooses to demonstrate his power like he did in that story. In the story we've just read, sometimes peace comes through a miracle. Sometimes God just gets up and answers your prayer and goes, Peace, quiet, be still, and the storm is gone out of your life. Let's all start by praying for that one. It could be healing, it could be a sickness or a disease. Let's all of us commit to praying for ourselves and for others that that's the option that God goes with. That's an awesome option because he's full glory in that option. Jesus gets glorified in that option. But there is an option number two. And sometimes God just walks you through the storm. Sometimes God gives you the grace and the courage to go through the storm while you continue to glorify Him. Uh, like Jesus did on His journey through the Garden of Gethsemane. You can ask that it be taken away from you, but sometimes God allows us to walk through the storm to demonstrate how good He is both at rescuing us and strengthening us so that we can face any storm. And it's the truth that all those 500 points that Debbie and I earned through those years, when I have something like what happened last week, got my dream job, lost my dream job, <laughs> so what? <laughs> What's next, Lord? <laughs> and it makes you very resilient so that you can bounce back and face whatever storm will come. When you receive peace from God, it's very hard then to contain it. When you receive overwhelming peace from God, whether it's a healing, whether it's deliverance, whether it's simply the courage to walk through your situation, it's very hard to contain that peace. Your peace flows out and you want to share it with others. Let's continue the story in chapter 5 of Mark, nearly at the end, actually. Because I want us to respond to God's invitation this morning. The story continues in Mark chapter 5, and they reach the other side. They get out of the boat, and immediately a demon-possessed man comes running down to, to meet Jesus. He broke him free of the chains that normally bound him, hand and foot. When we were living in Lesotho, they still have people chained up who are demon-possessed. Chained, bound, and foot, that's this man's life. He lived in the tombs, he, his home was a graveyard, he cried out night and day, and he cut himself in stones. And he was a man living in his own hellish storm. And so Jesus addressed the demon, the demons that plagued this man, and they said that their name was Legion, for they were many. And Jesus immediately brings peace and freedom to this man through deliverance, through casting these demons out of the man. He commands the demons to leave, and they flee into a herd of pigs. And then 2,000 pigs, at the shock of this demonic possession, run themselves off a cliff to a watery grave. When this happened, everybody freaks out, and the uh, pig herders run back, and they tell the village what's happened, and we pick it up there, Mark 5.15. When they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons, sitting there, dressed, and in his right mind. And they were afraid. The man had found peace with God, the storm was over, but the townspeople couldn't handle it. You may be from a family that can't handle it. <laughs> you may receive an amazing blessing from God and peace with Him and be surprised when your family or your friends or your partner or whoever it is completely freaks out. Don't be surprised, <laughs> be, be forewarned. Instead of being amazed at what God had done, they were more worried about their kids. And sadly for them, they asked Jesus to leave the town. Imagine that church. Imagine if Jesus came visiting, willing to set people free, and instead we tell him to go away. Mark 5, 18 to 20. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. Jesus did not let him, but said, Go home to your own people and tell them how much the Lord has done for you. 
and how he has had mercy upon him. So the man went away and he began to tell in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him, and all the people were amazed. In a single day, this man goes from being a slave of Satan and a slave of sin to being a servant of God. In a single moment, in a single day, and that can happen for you today as well. It begins with a single encounter with Jesus. John 8, verse said, If the Son sets you free, then you are free indeed. Romans 15, 13, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, so you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Romans 16, 20, The peace of God will crush Satan under your feet. When we discover peace with God, we do want to tell everyone about it. It's, it's uncontainable. We want to just go out and the peace will flow from you. It's not even it's effortless when you, when you find peace with God. So if you're, a, if you're an evangelist and you want to tell other people about Jesus, don't stress about that side of it so much. Just seek God's peace in your life and it will, it will flow out. You may come in a healing or a deliverance, uh, courage, any of those things. Whatever your peace is, um, it will bring glory to God. Even sometimes when it's not having the storm removed. Sometimes those are the hardest to understand. Uh, but if you do that well, you bring so much glory to God. And He'll use that. So can I ask you to come back up? Because really this is the most important part. It's, it's time for us to respond. Uh, and so what I want to do this morning is I don't really want to invite anyone up to the front unless, unless, as, as Debbie and Lita are singing, and we, and we sing with them and we worship God, um, if, you do, if you feel the power of God, if you, know, you need healing in your body and things like that, let's just leave it today to let God choose. You can come and ask for prayer, but I just want to do it a little differently today. Where we just worship God, we just give Him thanks. We just give Him thanks for who He is, we thank Him for that He is the rock um, in every storm. But if while we are worshiping Him, you feel, you feel the power of God in your body, then come out in front and we'll get a couple of people to pray for you. In fact, can I ask you Lee to, be, to pray for people? Lee's nothing special. <laughs> Lee's nothing special, but Lee believes in the power of God. Uh, Lee is special, a lot. Um, but he would be the first to say that he, he would be the first to not boast in anything except for his trust in God. And because they're doing, because they're living there, they're seeing God move in amazing ways. Have a chat with them afterwards and hear some stories. But I'll ask, yeah, I'll ask Lee and, and if he can pray for you. But you know, we don't have to force anything. We can just we, we've had an invitation from God Himself this morning. I truly, truly believe that. To give your burdens over. And I think that's a deeply personal thing. I want you to stay in your seats and do that with Him. And you'll take it home and not look more as you go home. But if you do want prayer with it, because it's it's about facing the storms together. So if you do want prayer, then just come up the front afterwards. Does it make sense? So stay in our seats, we'll worship together. If you feel the the Spirit, if you feel the presence of God, so if there's warmth or tingling or even part of your body goes cold, anything very unusual, supernatural, come to the front and we'll continue bringing that to God. But if you're giving a burden to Him, just do it when you see it. Just do it from where you are today. Make it between you and God. And then if you want more prayer, come in and um, seek it afterwards. And this is the last one before I jump out of the way. Um, two. Maybe you'll seek your peace through repentance. Pastor Rob mentioned that in communion. Sometimes our peace comes by clearing up some of the shame or guilt that we've been carrying. That's it. 
Easy to do because God is willing. If you have anything that you need to bring to God, bring it to Him and find the peace of God. It's, it's completely there on offer. So the last group is anyone who's here, I don't know who's really here, but if, if you've never met Jesus before, we always do this at this church, I love it. Um, that's most important. If, if you've never met Jesus and you want the peace that he offers and you just want to know how to get there, then please do come up and, and we'll pray and talk with you um, over that. So let me just pray and then um, I'll hand over to the Lord. Lord God, we thank you that you are, you are the Prince of Peace. And there is no storm that exists that you cannot bring peace into. And Father, we believe that you gave us a personal invitation this morning before we even started preaching to bring our burdens to you and to receive peace, Father. And so I just pray that freedom for everyone here this morning, Father, that you minister to each and every one of us. We, we bind any enemy who is trying to stop and steal that. Uh, and we ask all of this so that it brings glory to your name above all things in And so, Father, we, we seek your peace now. We ask your Holy Spirit to come and minister to us. We surrender to you. We surrender our storms to you. And we seek, we seek your glory uh, and bring us through that storm. We ask all of this in your precious name.
darkness tremble Jesus, Jesus You silence fear And Jesus, Jesus You make the darkness tremble Jesus, Jesus Let's sing your name And your name is a light That the shadows can't deny And your name 